half in the bag. <laughs> Did you know that Bruce Wayne is Batman? Oh. Lightning fast VCR repair. This is Mike. How can I help you? <sighs> no, we can't help you with your Netflix. I don't even know what that is. Oh, go fuck yourself. Mike, you shouldn't be yelling at the customers. <sighs> well, we keep getting these calls about people who want to watch a movie about nets. I didn't even know there were so many beekeepers in Wisconsin. Mike, Netflix is a streaming service. Oh, so it's about fishing nets. I get it. That makes a lot more sense. <sighs> Mike, I think we need to face reality. The VCR repair business is no longer viable. People watch movies on their fucking phones now. Oh God, what are you doing? Well, I think I'm watching the new Zack Snyder film. Hey, speaking of loud, obnoxious, miserable, tiresome, Worn out and old, we should really give Mr. Plinkett a visit. See if that cow's still milkable. Hmm, I think I know what you mean. You want to squeeze on his old tits to see if any milk comes out so that we could sell it on the street corner. Hello? Hello? Mr. Plinkett? Hello? Hey, Mike. Who's that guy? Oh my god, I don't know. Hey, fucko! Who are you? Oh, hi, I I'm Rich from Lightning Fast VCR Repair. What? You work for Lightning Fast VCR Repair? Yeah, yeah, Tim hired me after these, these two guys, these two homosexual men, Mike and Jay. I think they, they went off on some kind of gay retreat in a mountaintop somewhere. Now that, my friend, is only partially true. Well, anyway, uh, it seems like the second they left, we started getting flooded with calls from all over town. So like everyone needed their VCRs repaired. I've, I've been so busy, I can't keep up. <sighs> Is that so? Okay, here's how it's gonna go down. I'm gonna shoot him in the back of the head with the shotgun. You shoot him repeatedly in the testicles with your pistol. Wait, we might be able to use this to our advantage. Now this guy looks pretty dumb. We might be able to use him. I think I know where you're going with this, Jay. Yeah, we can milk his tits. <sighs> so, uh, what was his name, Rich? Yeah. Rich, how's the repair going? What? Got the headphones. This guy's an idiot. What a stupid asshole. What? I said, how's the repair going? Oh, well, uh, no, things are going pretty good. I was, I was just about to take a break to watch the new Zack Snyder film. Oh, is that the movie where a cop teams up with an orc? <laughs> no, no, I was gonna see the, the Batman versus Superman. Dawn of AIDS! Uh, what? Dawn of AIDS? No, 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 the title's Dawn of Justice. Why don't we all go see the film together? Yeah, we'd love to be best friends. Yeah, we like you. Oh, you guys are Mike and Jay. Well, I guess it's a good thing you guys are back because I could really use some help fixing all of these VCRs. Or you could do all the work while we skim money off the top and take advantage of your hard work ethic. And milk your tits. Man milk goes for a lot these days on the Chinese black market. It's a little side gig I want to get into. This motherfucker looks like he's filled with man milk. Is any of that true? Probably. You gotta be the one to tell him to take his pants off, though. Why would he have to take his pants off to milk his tits? I mean his shirt. Uh, hey, let's go watch the movie. Sounds great. Yeah. <sighs> well, that sucked. Yep. 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 
Yep. Yep. Yep. Yep. Yep. Yeah. That's what I thought it was gonna be. Yep. Exactly what I thought it was gonna be. Yep. 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 So how about that? Yep. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Oh God, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Oh yeah. Yep. Yep. Oh. Whoa, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. 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 Oh, it was a movie. Yeah. 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 Yep. Yeah. 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 That's how it starts. The fever. The rage that turns good men. Cruel. It's finally time. It's finally here. Years of anticipating the most dark, loud, explosive, and longest movie ever. And now everyone can finally see it. You probably think I'm talking about miracles from heaven. But nope, I'm talking about Batman v Superman, Dawn of Justice, motherfuckers. Zack Snyder brings us another movie. Yes, punching, monsters, overacting, bad acting, explosions, a confusing plot. But who cares? You fill your face with popcorn, you dumb fat cows. Eat the slop before the slaughter, you fucking pigs. Batman v Superman, as Zack Snyder calls it, uh, is a film. Sir? Technically. Sir, ma'am, what, what did you think? Uh, what happened? I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not sure what, I'm not entirely sure what happened. What do you, was it better or worse than Man of Steel? Better. See, I, I'm leaning towards better, but I'm wondering if that's just because I went into this one knowing what to anticipate. I, I Man agree. of Steel, Man of Steel was shocking. Like yeah. I could not believe what I was seeing. This, I was prepared for it. Uh, and the moment when Batman rips a sink off of a public bathroom wall and beats Superman <laughs> over the head with it is probably the funniest thing I will see all year. So sure. it's got that going for it. I gotta say, there's things in the movie I actually like. I like the solo Batman stuff, some of it. This is probably my favorite live action portrayal of Batman. He does detective-y things. He's not, he's not Christian Bale, he's not an asshole. Yeah. He's an asshole, but he's a proper Batman asshole. He's kind of quiet, reserved, and thinking, and thoughtful. And... Mm -hmm. Until he starts killing people with no remorse yeah. endlessly, which is, is in Batman's character, definitely. That's, that's this whole thing, right? is that he just violently murders everyone indiscriminately. I can't blame that on Ben Affleck, though. That's the no, script. No, no, Ben Affleck's good. I like Ben Affleck as Batman, I think, is what I'm saying. Batman's the, the most interesting superhero in a way because he's the most human. You know, he's the most like us, and he can be kind of broken, which is really fascinating to be coupled with this, these, all this heroic stuff. Ben Affleck as Batman was most definitely the best part of the film. I like I like a, a later year Batman who's kind of like eh, whatever. And the detective stuff. And you, and you stuff haven't read fun. The Dark Knight. No. I mean <laughs> The Dark Knight Returns, which is of course the the biggest inspiration for this version of Batman. And I, I think that book is genius, but the story itself is not that story. Mm -hmm. Um the story itself is a story that we came up with just um you know, on our own. Um <laughs> The best part was the 10 minutes where Batman fights Superman. No, that was the, the schlockiest part. That's what I enjoyed the most. <laughs> that's why it was the best. Yeah, okay, The rest that's of the movie fair. was so fucking dour. Like, I mean, and that's... Uh, we should try and avoid just repeating everything we said with Man of Steel, which is hard to do, because this is very much like Man of Steel in that the first half is boring, depressing, almost incoherent, there's no narrative thrusts. It's just sort of scenes, scenes. happening. Mm -hmm. And it's like close up, close up, close up, close up in another location. So I guess we're in a new scene. There's no establishing shots throughout the entire fucking movie. It's just like all these close ups. Yeah. And there's no, like you could replace, put the scenes in any order and it wouldn't make much of a difference. That's true. Well, I, I think I agree with you when you said you were more prepared this time. 
Because Man of Steel, like I had a, I had a physical headache. Like, yeah. And I'm not just speaking like, oh, it was a headache, the movie. I, I literally, my head was pounding and I, I had to go like this at a certain point and mm -hmm. close off my senses because I felt like I was being assaulted. Yes. This, I, I, whether or not I was just more prepared for it, or it didn't seem as excessive as I was expecting. So it was less loud and stupid <laughs> than I was hoping for, but it was more confusing. <laughs> the last 25 minutes is pure confusing though. Yeah. Confusing destruction. Confusing destruction, pointless, stupid. Awful. Yeah, yeah. And dream sequences that oh, are put in there for what seems like to be put in the trailer only. Yeah, Batman, there's this dream sequence. Batman's wearing like a duster, like a, like a trench coat, and he's in the desert, and then a, a ghost Robin? Is that supposed to be Robin? Who's the fucking ghost that tells him? Oh yeah, a ghost comes out of his computer screen. A ghost comes out of his but computer that's... and is like, Lois is the key to all of this. Oh, I She's think... She's a funnier character than we've had before, but if we no, can get her her key... <laughs> I'll tell you who I'm pretty sure that is. Okay. And it's weird that it was a dream sequence, because if it wasn't a dream sequence, sequence it would have been clever. Uh-huh. I think that's the Flash. The Flash has time travel powers, because he can run faster than the speed of light. Okay, or I mean- not they... dream travel powers? <laughs> not dream travel powers. If that wasn't a dream sequence, that would have been like, a fairly clever hint for like movies to come. Like Flash is coming in from a future movie to warn Bruce Wayne about something, but he was, yeah. it was too early and Bruce Wayne doesn't know who the Flash is yet. And that would have been a neat setup, but then it was a dream. Well, you said clever hints at movies to come. This movie has hints of movies to come, but there's nothing clever about any of it. And there won't be any movies to come. <laughs> <laughs> well, this movie's terrible, but if it gets, if it makes a shitload of money, it doesn't yeah. matter. I think it will. It probably I mean, will. I mean, who doesn't want to see a Batman versus Superman movie? But this is Murder Man versus Captain Hypocrite. <laughs> Which one's which? Wait. I'm, I'm well, Batman fine. is definitely Murder Man. <laughs> there was like like an hour and a half of boring scenes, and then the minute you left, exciting action schlock oh, what happened. Oh, I miss <laughs> the scene oh. where Batman runs into Superman with the we, Batmobile. We, right? we find out that the, the boat is smuggling the kryptonite, and they're putting the kryptonite onto like a truck, and the, the smugglers are going to take that to Lex Luthor. And then Batmobile charges in and, and just starts killing everybody yeah. with cannons. Yeah. Batman decides he wants to steal the kryptonite, so he just murders everyone endlessly. Like, like the car jumps off of ramps and lands on people, and... <laughs> he actually, he, he hooks a, uh, like a cord to another car, drags the car around, does like a, like a spin thing, so the car flies through the air to hit another car. <laughs> it's the dumbest <laughs> shit. And I assume you were laughing during this sequence? And then Superman, who's had no qualms about murdering people up till now, he lands like on the Batmobile, like the Batmobile hits Superman, just kind of bounces away, and he tells Batman, you better stop being Batman, and he flies off. Was that the actual dialogue? It was basically Basically, the yeah. Next time they shine your light in the sky, don't go to it. The bat is dead. Bury it. Consider this mercy. Then, then two scenes later, off camera, Batman steals a kryptonite. <laughs> off camera. Back from Lex Luthor. Back from Lex Luthor. Yeah. How does he do that? Uh, we don't, he didn't show it. <laughs> <laughs> they really didn't show it. He it, it just, it just cut the Lex coming to the LexCorp. There's like like sirens and whatnot, and, and the, the cage that the kryptonite was in, there's just like a, a batarang in there. Yeah, they have this whole action scene oh, that's yeah. pointless because he's trying to steal the kryptonite. He doesn't steal the kryptonite. You could have had a whole action scene of him actually stealing the kryptonite, <laughs> yes. and they just don't have that. Mm. Bruce Wayne meets Clark Kent. Ah, I love it. I love bringing people together. How are we? Lex. Well, speaking of Lex Luthor, what was his goal in this movie? He just has no motivation. What? He has less than, he has negative motivation. Why does he not like Superman? I don't know. 
because the movie needs to happen. I, he says something like, is he just jealous of his power? That's or? not made clear. Yeah, he has lots of like like diatribes about gods and yeah, their relation right, right, with right. humans and stuff. But so I guess it's just related to that. But it's all really really vague, and it's just it's just there to set up a giant orc monster at the end of the movie for everyone to fight. Yeah. Well, Lex reminded me more of the Joker than he did of Lex Luthor. Yes. Like an insane person he comes across who like wants a crazy to create person. chaos was. The polar opposite of Batman. He he just wants chaos. He'd be a half decent Joker. You're right. He's a terrible Lex Luthor. He should have been the Joker. <laughs> you're psychotic. That is a three syllable word for any thought too big for little minds. I was gonna say the biggest problem, but one of the many problems of the film is that this is not a likable Superman who would people would build statues to. This is a Superman who who brought terror and destruction to Metropolis. Yeah, and that's established in this movie. There's so many people that are against him. Like, it's not even like the last movie, maybe they set that up and then this movie ignores that. In this movie, that's one of the major points is that people are really conflicted on how to feel about him. Isn't that Spider-Man's thing where people don't like him? Yeah. And he, he decides to help even though people hate but him. People supposedly like Superman. There's a memorial statue to Superman. But who likes him? Everyone's protesting I don't, against him. I, I, it, it, that's the fail. I mean, you want to, what you need to do, because you have Batman, and Batman's Mr. Dollar, right? You want to contrast Batman of course. with colorful Superman, not Superman in muted colors who breaks people's necks, flies through buildings that collapse on on children and then murders people in the desert. There, well, there was one part, I think it's when Lex Luthor, uh, Superman comes back. He throws Amy Adams off the roof. Yes. Somehow Superman knows she's falling. Hey, Superman. Yeah, he's Superman. He catches her and then he puts her down and he comes back up and then he says to Lex Luthor, I'd rather bring you in one piece than broken in a million pieces. Well, he says something similar yeah, to Batman. Like, oh my God. He's, no, I think it's more along the lines of like, I should bring you in in a million pieces, but I'm going to do you this kindness. Yeah. yeah well, it's... thank you, Superman. <laughs> oh, thank you for not breaking every one of my bones. Yeah. Because I'm completely yeah. helpless. Superman's supposed to say, oh, hi, Lex. Good evening to you. What are you up to? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I mean, okay, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Corny Christopher Reeve Superman cannot exist in 2016. We know that. Right. But this movie, I don't know. I'm, I'm like, they're, they're trying to do a thing where, where they say, what if Superman really existed in modern day? Mm -hmm. There would be people going, he's a, he's, a, he's a monster. He's here to destroy us. There would be, everyone wouldn't be like, look, it's a bird, it's a plane. No, it's Superman. Everyone wouldn't be like that. There would be people on CNN arguing back and forth about this and that. And there'd be blah, blah, blah. But we don't need that. We live that every day <laughs> over every, <laughs> movies are about escapism. Yeah. And we don't need to see well, especially, miserable people on CNN and yeah. complaining about politics and in a Superman movie. Especially, yeah, superhero movies, especially like this movie's constantly like on the news, they're talking about like terrorism, yeah. terrorists, uh -huh. they're seeing buildings getting blown up. And it's just like, I didn't, I don't want to watch a Superman movie yeah. that's reminding me of how miserable real life is. Two days ago, the fucking Brussels airport exploded. I was thinking of that during this died. movie, yeah. They, they, they show pictures picture of uh, Wonder Woman in Belgium. Yeah. And it's like, it's terrorists, terrorists, terrorism, explosions, and violence, and everyone hates each other. And, and there's that part in the, a Amy Adams is in the desert in the beginning under doing, trying to interview a terrorist or some kind of- a Terrorist general, general, general something, yeah, something. Some, and you know, and then uh, the, the photographer with her is a secret CIA operative, and then and then they're like, and they blow his brains out. And I, and I noticed you went, you're like, ooh. Because you expected Superman yes! to come down. Yeah. Yes! And I was like, where was, oh. Yeah. Consider this mercy. How can you not watch this movie and not root for Lex Luthor? <laughs> Lex Luthor's like, yeah, we need to have like a backup plan for this insane alien who can destroy continents. And I'm like, yeah! <laughs> yeah, Le Lex Luthor yeah. was the sanest person in this movie. You know what the worst part about that is too? The hypocrisy when, when Superman is Clark Kent is deriding Batman for his methods. <laughs> you do the same shit. Yeah. You know what I really liked? 
the depressing montage of Superman saving people in the beginning. <laughs> yeah. I was thinking about that. They show him like, uh, I gotta drive this boat. Okay. There, yeah, there's like a rocket that's going up and it explodes, and then you, and it's all done in like slow motion. You see some of it in the trailer, like he's bringing down a thing. Yeah, in slow you thought motion. it was an exciting moment. Yeah, like it look like these are the moments that should be exciting action sequences, and they're portrayed as like a burden for Superman, and they're executed in a way where it's like depressing to look at. Yeah. You don't know this world a thing. You never did. Do you know the oldest lie in America, Senator? The devils don't come from hell beneath us. They come from the sky. Superman's motivation wasn't set up, and Lex Luthor's motivation wasn't set up. And that's like, there's three characters in the movie. <laughs> and half, uh, two, two thirds of that don't work. Yeah, Bruce Wayne, Batman's motivation is very well set up. In the beginning, I, I like that action sequence that yeah. it opened on. The, the retcon of Man of Steel. Yeah, right. Which is funny because I know like, like dumb people will say that was their intention all along, but it's so clearly a response to the negative criticism uh -huh. that Man of Steel got, where it's like, okay, now we're seeing all this destruction from the end of Man of Steel from Bruce Wayne's point of view, and, and it's horrible, and that's his entire motivation for hating Superman. Like, got it. But then the end of this movie is just the same level of destruction. I, 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 I must disagree, Jay. They clearly said they landed on uh, Rikers Island and it's uninhabited. Oh yeah, they, they throw <laughs> that in. They make a point of showing that there's no extras anywhere in the movie, but it's still the same amount of destruction. Well, even, it, even later on though, when they have to lure Doomsday back into the city, there's like a contrived reason to get him back into the city so they can blow up more buildings. Batman has a line, there's nobody in this area. Yeah, he looks right at the camera. <laughs> Do you, remember, do you remember when Alfred took control of the bat plane and I thought, oh my God, now Alfred's gonna start murdering people. <laughs> you have to take it, Alfred. Ah, right. Commencing drone mode. Oh God, Alfred's gonna kill people. Well, imaging is showing me too. That scene where he comes in the warehouse and beats everyone up. And murders it, everybody. Oh, he, he, it does, I, I think he murders he half of them. He mostly, murders half. Th they probably died later of their injuries in the hospital. He shot. He shot the one guy's flamethrower backpack. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And then it exploded in a fireball. Then the same room that Martha Kent was in. Superman's <laughs> Superman's elderly mother. Well, Batman jumped on top of her and protected her with a fireproof cape. <laughs> but the, but the one guy, I think he stabs the one guy in his shoulder to get back at him because he got stabbed in the shoulder. But it looks like he just stabs him right in the heart. <laughs> 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 and and then and then after Martha Kent witnesses, you know, two guys die in a fire explosion, she 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 mentions that, oh I knew you were Superman's friend because of the cape! <laughs> <laughs> I'm not traumatized at all. That was horribly out of place, but it was also like, oh, I remember humor. <laughs> it's the one moment of levity in the entire movie, and it's at the most inappropriate time. She with you? I thought she was with you. The the uh, I thought she was with you part was was semi humorous, but there was like like pulsating techno music over it, so it kind of ruined the. It's like, buff, 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 buff. <laughs> With you. I, you. I just realized that Doomsday was a walking disco tap. <laughs> Everywhere he went, like dancing electric, was shooting around. Well, the movie is called Batman vs. Superman. People are there to see Batman fight Superman, and it's it's one percent of the entire movie. The first hour and a half, hour forty five minutes, is establishing why Batman hates Superman. That's the opening scenes of the movie. Mm -hmm. He hates Superman. He's gonna fight Superman. He fights him for five minutes, and then they immediately turn to being best friends when Batman realizes that both of their moms are named Martha. Makes some sense because Batman definitely has parental issues. Uh, sure, if you're gonna, if you're gonna get to Batman's heart, if you're gonna move him, that is how you would do it. 
Is that all it would take? The whole movie is set up as like, Batman wants to beat the shit out of Superman. He thinks he's a threat. He thinks he's a problem to the world. That's the entire thing. That's the whole first half of the movie. I got Martha, your elderly mother, so go beat up Batman. Bring yes. me back, rip his hat off and bring it back to me, which <laughs> Superman wouldn't do. But he, I, he, I don't know why not. In, 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 all, in all fairness, he does fly over there with the intention of talking to Batman first to get him to help him fight Lex Luthor or get his mom back. Superman, uh, or Batman has, has a little bullets that shoot out uh, uh, crystal meth. Or, uh, oh, what? Kry kryptonite dust. Kryptonite. And then it, it like momentarily like weakens uh, Superman. And then he's got him down and he's punching him in the face like Spock. And then he goes, I'm just trying to save Martha. And then he goes, oh, Martha, what? Why did you say that name? Why did you say that name? <laughs> and, then, and then Amy Adams runs him, AKA Lois Lane and says, Martha's his mommy's name. <laughs> and then, <laughs> this is what happens. Then Bruce Wayne goes, oh. And then he backs off. But really, you should go, oh, what the fuck, who the fuck cares? That's, that's a weird coincidence. <laughs> 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 that's a weird exactly. Yeah. Oh, so speaking of that, he's got a, a staff. Well, that's fueled by kryptonite it's or It's a whatever. caveman spear. It's a spear with kryptonite in it, and that's what he's going to use to kill Superman. Mm. And then he realizes that they both have moms named Martha, and so now they're best buddies. They, they and both he, love their mommies. Yes, they both love their moms. <laughs> so he throws down the spear, Yeah. and then they start fighting uh, the cave troll from Lord of the Rings. Yes, yes. And uh, Lois Lane, for no reason, takes the staff, the kryptonite staff, and yes. she throws it in some water. And then Batman says, in an unrelated scene in a completely different area, I need that staff back. Yes. And then they cut to Lois Lane, and she goes back to get the staff that she just threw in the water. She just knows that they need the staff back? Yes. So she has to immediately go back and get the staff that she just threw in the water that she doesn't know they need? Yes. Lois Lane is a crafty lady. Yes. And she probably assumed that... Uh, <laughs> That the, the monster was a Kryptonian monster. She would just assume that. She probably assumed that Lex Luthor got inside the Kryptonian ship, you know, found some alien goo in the body of Zod, <laughs> and, and cut his own blood and mixed his DNA with Zod's DNA somehow to create a giant monster. It's a safe assumption. Yes. Why did he want to build a giant monster? Why did he want them to fight? Because he wanted to kill Superman, but the question is why did he want to kill Superman? And we really don't know. Did he think that Batman would really be able to kill Superman? Yeah, yes, because he's been, he's been manipulating Batman for the last two years. Oh, sending the checks with the things yeah. on him? And, yeah. But Batman didn't even see them. No. Until the last minute. Yes. When he realized he was being manipulated. Yes. <laughs> Look, it's a fucking mess. The script is a fucking mess. Did, why didn't Lex Luthor like, like let Batman have the kryptonite then? Because they needed an action scene where the Batmobile murdered ten people. Like an action scene that where it was a setup. Like and then Bat they needed an off-screen action scene where Batman probably murdered twenty people. Yeah, that's the worst scene about that. The worst thing about that scene is that it's there's no point to it. <laughs> Batman murder aside, Lex Luthor wanted Batman to beat Superman, but he was also trying to make a weapon to beat Superman. Yes. He really didn't want them to fight for no reason at all, or did he? I know a few women like you. Oh, I don't think you've ever known a woman like me. I mean, the early stuff with Wonder Woman's kind of neat. You know, if you're just gonna hint at Wonder Woman in the future. Sure. But when she shows up with the sword to hack at the disco monster. <laughs> and the rock music's playing. The rock, it was just <laughs> so out of place in this film. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I was watching those scenes and I was like, this could be fun in another movie. Do you, did you like the scene when, when uh, Wonder Woman looked on a laptop? And I'll, on the different like superheroes from the Super Friends or whatever. Yeah, so, Rich, you know, you know about comics. Obviously, this movie is setting up the Justice League. Uh, uh, in this movie, Lex Luthor is apparently responsible for assembling all these characters and even giving them each individual logos. Well, he, he gives them the logos, which is neat. I don't think <laughs> is that neat. I don't think. Well, no. But I don't think he was trying to assemble them. I he think was he was just keeping, yeah, he was keeping tabs on them. The, uh, and then Batman finds this and he's like, he sends it in an instant message on AOL to. <laughs> Very to, secure. Yeah. <laughs> to, um, 
<laughs> to, to Wonder Woman's laptop. I, I don't know how he has her. He has her instant messenger address. Well, it was in Lex Luthor's computer that he hacked somewhere. Yeah, yeah. He's like, whoa, check out this. So wait, Lex Luthor was keeping tabs on other superheroes because he wanted to destroy them too because he wanted to be the most powerful person? I don't know. They're doing it backwards. Marvel started really slow. Uh, Iron Man, who at the time, nobody gave a fuck about Iron Man. You know, do an Iron Man movie. Uh, Thor, nobody gives a fuck about Thor. Captain America, people kind of care about that. And they, they built up to the Avengers. That was down the road. That was years ahead in the plan. They're starting off with the Justice League movie. This is basically the Justice League movie. Well, it's the, the it's setup a, for the, yeah. Wonder Woman shows up, and it's, it's a half. It's half the Justice League. Sure. And now we're supposed to care about like the, the, the smaller ones. It's like. I don't think it's smaller ones though. It's it's yeah. they they started big and they're going to get bigger. -er. No, Jay. No, the next film. They're well. They're backtracking and they're making a Ben Affleck solo Batman movie, mm -hmm. which which I actually might. Be I, I would rather see, see that. that than this. But yeah. Then, the, what's worse is they're making a Wonder Woman movie, mm. and. I couldn't understand what that bitch was saying. <laughs> she was a terrible actress. Well, for me, with Wonder Woman, uh, I feel like I have been given such a huge opportunity to show the strong, beautiful side of women, finally. And... <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> that was like when, when, a, when a, uh, an athlete goes on Saturday Night Live and tries to act. Mm. Just terrible. I don't want to watch a feature with her. And then, then they're making an Aquaman movie, which was laughable. Oh, well, when he comes, he comes out of the submarine and, and he's like, Wah, yeah. with, Wah. with like the trident. And, and I'm like, is this a joke? <laughs> it reminded me of the, the, uh, the, the video footage of the lion in The Happening. Oh. Oh, yeah, when the guy feeds his own arms to the I was, lions. I was laughing out loud. How yeah. supposed to take, I, I am not, I have zero interest, and I'm sure 90% of the world does too, of seeing an Aquaman movie, yeah. a solo movie. But if you want to make a Justice League movie, that's fine, but that's a dead end right there, Justice League done. Outside of Batman and Superman, DC is just full of really lame characters. That's true. You sound like you have a Marvel bias. The only reason you dislike this movie is because you're biased towards Marvel. It has nothing to do with the fact that they're doing things intelligently and correctly and taking their time. Uh, it's just that you, you, you have a bias against these DC movies. And that Marvel movies are fun. Yeah, who wants fun in their superhero movies? That son of a bitch brought the war to us. Consider this mercy. Do you bleed? You will. Stay down! If I wanted it, you'd be dead already. Superhero movies are just angry people that yell and kill. And punch each other. Punch each other, and they just knock over buildings. They don't give a fuck. <laughs> <laughs> That's a superhero. When I see a superhero movie, I want to come out of the theater crying. <laughs> and, well, I have good news for you. suicidal. <laughs> Maybe like Spider-Man, if this movie bombs enough, they'll be desperate enough just to let Marvel do it. <laughs> <laughs> They'll turn over the right of Superman to Marvel. Yeah. You guys just, look like just, you know what you're doing. Just do it. <laughs> and you know what? Marvel would probably set up a fantastic Marvel versus DC film. Sure, yeah. Yeah, they just give up all their rights. Like Ten billion dollars here. Oh, take all these fucking terrible characters. We tried. We put all our faith in Zack Snyder. I don't know why. Maybe you can do it better. So I think with, with, with Batman v Superman, you're, you're going to get a movie that... that certainly lives in a real world, but certainly has, I, I believe, has much more um, sort of cinematic markers. It would be like, like Zack Snyder would direct half the film. They would like, they would like go to one side of the room and it would be like all dark and violent and the other side would be like. <laughs> Run Zack's side of the city. Everyone's gonna get murdered. <laughs> Wait, here comes Ant-Man. <laughs> here comes Wacky Paul Rudd. <laughs> Batman, do you bleed tiny blood? <laughs> I want to see Zack Snyder's Ant-Man. Oh, God. But Ant-Man would definitely use his ants to murder people oh, in the absolutely. Zack Snyder film. Absolutely, yeah. We've always imagined God as big, but your God is small. <laughs> Lofty dialogue. <laughs> that 
makes no sense. That's we were talking before about uh, DC or whoever's in charge of these movies. How they were saying they were concerned that this movie, Batman vs Superman, would be too smart for audiences. Mm -hmm. After seeing the movie, that's such a fucking joke. You know, wealth and power, and the way power engenders fear, and there were a lot of really ideas that were a little bit too smart for me to understand, but that the movie was trafficking in and that I thought made it feel uh, real to me and, and smart. And uh, so I was even more proud to be part of it. Wait, didn't Lux Luthor put a bomb in a wheelchair? Was that this movie? <laughs> Or was that a different movie? That was, this, that was movie. this movie. And he blew up Congress? Yeah. Yes. Okay. He I, blew up Holly Hunter. You, you, yeah. In order to blame Superman for it, but it didn't work at all. No. And then no it's just another pointless it. scene in a series of pointless scenes. Five minutes later. I was expecting, like, did Superman burn the Capitol down? No, 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 we hate you, Superman. No, five minutes later, it was like, well, it was the bomb in the wheelchair, and Superman is cleared of all charges. <laughs> so their focus group said people didn't like all that, that collateral damage. I mean, I kind of appreciate their attempt to have all that pointless destruction in the Man of Steel movie have a purpose in this movie, but it's still, it's still just mindless destruction at the end of this movie. Maybe there's no innocent civilians being killed, but it's still the same shit. It's just flames everywhere. It's the dullest fucking fight. Yeah, it's just like, and it's, it's so, and we saw the movie in the worst conditions possible. We saw it in 3D, near the front row, off to the side, so everything's fucked, and, and it's just like, shaky cam and like people flying everywhere getting thrown across the ground and the cameras following them blurry along. mess it's a blurry mess and, and it's a fight i mean there's consequences in the sense that like well if they don't stop the monster it'll destroy more of the city but there's no like uh, inner you know well, they is have such, to accomplish Doomsday is such a compelling character yeah it's just a giant monster that they have to stop and that's the entire ending of the movie why wasn't it like, I know it was Doomsday is a thing, but in, in the logic of the movie, like, why wasn't it like a resurrected Zod? That would have been neat. I guess that arc, uh, that storyline has already been done, but he, he, like, like a vengeful Zod, like, you killed me, yeah, Superman. Where there would be some sort of connection between yeah. the, the villain and Superman. Now I have more power than you. I'm going to eat people. Then he picks up a bus filled with children and just starts going like this. <laughs> you leave those children alone, Zod. Oh wait, that's Superman. Sorry. You leave those children alone, Superman. <laughs> Superman's about to hurl the bus at Zod. <laughs> Oh, wait, Superman. The bus is filled with children. Oh, fuck. I wasn't sure who to root for in this film. Lex Luthor. Lex Luthor? Yeah. As crazy as he was. Maybe maybe Lawrence Fishburne. I was really concerned, like, that's a good article. It's gonna be a great story. Oh yeah, monsters and fighting. What's next? What's on tomorrow's edition? Clark Kent, don't you write that story about that compelling vigilante in Gotham. You cover the local high school basketball team like I told you to. <laughs> <laughs> I know you've got a scoop and a very exciting and interesting case, but we need to know if the, the, the South Central High Generals can <laughs> take home the, the regional sub championship this year. <laughs> Son of a bitch brought the war to us. You know you can't win this. It's suicide. Batman had nothing to do in the Doomsday fight. Batman's the the most interesting superhero in a way because he's the most human. He actually had nothing to do. He shot Doomsday with one more canister of the kryptonite dust. And Doomsday went and, and it distracted him for a second while uh, Wonder Woman was holding with the rope. So both of them worked together to slow down the monster just enough for Superman to fly in with the thing. Right. That's what they, they, they worked as a fucking team, Rich. That was the point of the movie. You want to accomplish, <laughs> you accomplish your goal if you work as a team. Zack Snyder directs the next one. He's, he's really gonna wank off of the Jesus stuff when Superman gets resurrected. <laughs> <laughs>
It's going to take place three days later. <laughs> Do you think they'll follow the comic book version of the death of Superman? No, because that was really interesting. He comes <laughs> <laughs> Fight night. So, Rich Evans, our man, lightning fast VCR repair employee trainee, would you recommend this movie? I would recommend watching like an edit of all of the Batman stuff. Okay, that's fair. So, I recommend watching the film and leaving immediately after uh, that scene. I, although the fight? You gotta sit through uh, fucking yeah. two hours before you get to that. Someone's out there, figure out exactly when the fight starts. <laughs> And when it ends, buy your ticket, watch that part, and leave. Even though it was schlock and, Super, er, and Batman beat Superman with the toilet, <laughs> I loved it. Batman had the big armor on. And I, was like, I did like what? the glowing eyes. Yeah, it like, neat. Visually, was like, it was what? fine. Well, how could Superman fight Batman? Or vice versa? By how punching could... him really hard and then the fight's over. Yeah. No, 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 but Batman had some tricks up his sleeve. Oh, yeah. like when he uh, had him on a rope and was swinging yeah. him around and smacking him into the fucking walls? That reminded me of um, Freddy versus Jason. You remember that part? Oh, yeah. Like Freddy's yeah. using dream power to like, smash <laughs> Jason around. I, was, I, had, I had flashbacks of that, but no, no, no. He, he, he weakened Superman with kryptonite dust and then beat shit out of him. That was awesome. Why didn't he just make like a gun full of kryptonite bullets? He only had so much, Rich. It was a very rare commodity that was found in the Indian Ocean. Use the shit you made that spear out of and you make the kryptonite bullets. Kryptonite brass knuckles. And then there's no limit to how often you can punch Superman in the face. You know, the, you know, the dust wears off, but brass knuckles last forever. Do you know in the comics there's a kryptonite ape? There's an ape that shoots out kryptonite beams from his eyes. Okay. Because apparently at some point in DC's history, there was an issue of a comic with an ape on the cover that sold unusually well for no good reason. And there was a mandate that they had to have more apes. This is a fact. I, I really want to see that memo. <laughs> we need more apes. <laughs> This movie could have used more apes. It could have used more baboons driving tanks. Oh, yeah, yeah. Firing kryptonite dust at Superman. <laughs> uh, Jay, do, would you recommend this? No, not at all. I thought this movie was miserable. The first hour and a half was boring. The second hour... The first half, I was, like, uh, the scenes are so, like, disconnected from each other that I was thinking, like, I just wanted to yell, get on with it. Mm. And then the second half of the movie, I just wanted to keep yelling, ends. If... You could rewrite the script a bit. Give Lex Luthor motivation. Give him a reason to oh, do Jesus the crazy Christ. things he's doing. We need another hour. I know, I know. And f fix Superman where he's not like a hypocrite monster, where he is a contrast to Batman. You can, you can make this work. You can make this movie work with a completely different story. Yes, absolutely. With a highly changed story, you can make it work. Yeah, but if Superman is, is, is Christopher Reeve's Superman, Batman wouldn't violently hate him so much. Yeah. So, you're, you're fucked either way. I'm sorry. I, I, Maybe. I, you, the most talented screenwriter in the world could possibly write some kind of story out of this. Either way, it's, it's just a mess. It's, it's a big mess. They didn't need Wonder Woman in there. Uh, they didn't need any component of this. Mm. Other than the, 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 the freak show of Batman fighting Superman, which got everyone into the circus tent. This way to the egress! <laughs>
I thought it was a VCR repair manual, but it's not. Yeah, for years, all of our VCRs came out looking like Batman. Start the trivia challenge, Jay. In the comics, what is the Joker's real name? Ooh. When DC Comics created Arkham Asylum, its name was inspired by what fictional person, place, or thing from the works of H.P. Lovecraft? Um, uh, what does he win if he gets all these correct? Nothing. Batman's cowl is equipped with a special kind of night vision lens. What's it called? In Detective Comics number 275, a strange accident left Batman's costume with zebra stripes, turning him into the zebra Batman, because being named after one animal sometimes isn't enough. What superpower did he have during his temporary transformation as zebra Batman? In Batman Inferno, someone is masquerading as the Dark Knight. Who is it? Where's he gone? What the fuck is happening? I'm not a fraud! Oh my god, he just took off with Mr. Plinkett. Oh my god, he just took off with Mr. Plinkett's VCR. That's our meal ticket. Oh shit. We should get up and run after him before it's too late. What three famous items occupy the Batcave's trophy room and are most often depicted by comic book artists? A giant penny, the Joker's playing card, and a robotic Tyrannosaurus Rex. That's right. Get him! 